$1.7 trillion. In six months, $1.7 trillion in six months. What's up everybody, welcome to Heresy Financial. My name is Joe Brown and $1.7 trillion is the amount of money that the government spent in excess of the amount of money that they received. It was their budget deficit, but not for an entire year. This $1.7 trillion has been their deficit for the first six months of their budget, for the first half of their fiscal year. Now, I know the word billions is basically nothing anymore, and the word trillions has replaced that, and uh, trillions just gets thrown around all the time. It seems like every day, every week, there's new trillion dollar plans uh, in the works to be spent. But just to put this into perspective, this $1.7 trillion deficit for the first six months dwarfs the previous record, which was $829 billion for the first six months. This brings up some questions, right? Number one, where's all this money coming from? Number two, is this inflationary? Number three, what will things look like through the end of the year, since this is how the first part of the year is going? And what are the consequences? Ready? Let's dive in. All right, so we need to look at the scope of this first. And so we're gonna look at a couple of charts here. Take a look at this one, which shows uh, where the current budget is tracking uh, in relation to the last couple of years. And you can see more than every year for the last couple of years, obviously, because it's a record so far. But it's interesting, especially in light of the fact that it's bigger than last year, which, you know, it was a, it was a big spending year last year, to say the least. This time last year, we were only at a deficit of $743 billion. However, the spending really hadn't started kicking into gear yet. As you can see, the deficit was basically the same or similar. Uh, it was still growing, but it was in line with the previous couple of years. And the spending really kicked into gear after that. So what does this mean? What is a budget deficit? Well, number one, it's different than a trade deficit. They're very different things. This is a budget deficit. So you personally, when you bring home your paycheck for $5,000 in the month of uh, April, let's say you spent $6,000. That month, you had a deficit of $1,000. You just spent more than you earned during that time period. It's the exact same with the federal government. If they have a deficit, that just means they're spending more than they're bringing in in income. Okay, fair enough. So what is the income source for the federal government? In this case, what they're talking about for their income source is taxes. That's the federal government's only form of income or you know, income when it's uh, regarding their budget is taxes. Now, what is the only other way, the only other method the federal government has for getting its hands on more money than it can bring in from taxes? There's only one other option, that is borrowing. So for the first six months, it spent $1.7 trillion more than it's brought in from taxes that must be made up through borrowing. Just like you, if you spent $6,000, but you only made $5,000 in a single month, the only way you could have done that is if you would have purchased the additional $1,000 worth of stuff with a credit card. Ah, but there's a catch, because if we take a look at the numbers, we would have expected then over this same time frame for the federal debt, the national debt, to increase by the same amount as the deficit, right? Because if you overspend from, if you're, if you bring in a certain amount of taxes, you spend all of that, and then you spend an additional $1.7 trillion, and the only way you can spend extra money beyond the income is to borrow, you would expect the national debt to go up by $1.7 trillion as well, right? Well, let's take a look at the numbers. Over this time frame, the federal or the national debt went up by $1 trillion. Interesting. So we're missing about $700 billion, give or take a few. So how is this possible then? Because we know in prior years, uh, what normally happens is they are, uh, they've got their budget, right? And then they overspend. There's a little bit of a deficit and they say, hey, we had a deficit this year of $500 billion, let's say. But the national debt grows by, let's say, $600 billion or $700 billion by more. That's due to off-budget spending. And so if you want to know what the real deficit is, all you have to really look at is the national debt number because the debt will grow by the amount that they have to increase their spending by whether it's on budget or not. It's all the money they spent that they didn't have uh, the income to pay for from taxes. But it's actually the opposite over the last six months. Over the last six months, they've spent an additional 1.7 trillion on top of their income, but the national debt has only increased by 1 trillion. So what happened to the other 700 billion? Well, think of it this way. If it was your personal budget, and let's say you didn't have uh, a credit card, and you made $5,000 in one month, 
but you spent $6,000 in that same month and you didn't use debt to do that. How is that possible? You've got a savings account, right? You just drew on income that you had already uh, received from prior months. Now, does the federal government have a savings account? Well, in a way they do. Take a look at this chart. This is called the Treasury General Account. And this account basically is like the checking account or the savings account for the uh, for the federal government. Now you can see here uh, after the uh, financial crisis, the great financial crisis 12 years ago, this account basically uh, hovered around the $400 billion mark. And then as soon as the response to COVID happened and all the money was printed, all the debt was taken off, all the you know emergency spending, all the facilities, all that. This Treasury General account it spiked and uh, topped out right around 1.7, 1.8 trillion. This is because the federal government borrowed additional money. Their fed the federal the national debt increased by more, and so they had they borrowed a lot of money, and that money just went into their uh, their checking account. It just went into this account, and they didn't uh, they didn't spend it as fast as it came in. But the Treasury has been clear over the last couple of months that their goal is to get this back down to a uh, more normal 400, 500 billion dollar mark. And so you can see here that since then, uh, the amount that's been in this account has been draining. And so the additional money that the federal government has been spending, has they're been drawing from this account. They haven't been increasing their national debt by the same amount as the deficit has been. So how do we test that? Let's see, how much was the deficit for the, first, for the last six months? Uh, $1.7 trillion. How much did the national debt increase by? About 1 trillion, so that leaves, you know, they spent an additional $700 billion. Where did that come from? Let's take a look at this. Since October to now, the Treasury General Accounts balance has decreased by just about $700 billion. So over the next couple of months, this account will probably approach, uh, you know, $500, $400 billion. So it's got another $600 billion or so to go down from its current levels, which means that the deficits will be larger than the amount that the national debt will increase by until this account gets back down to a more normal level, simply because they had a surplus of money come into it because they borrowed more than they spent last year. Now, you might be asking the question, is this inflation? because all of this money seems like it's being created out of nothing. It's coming from nowhere. It's brand new money being injected into the system. As the national debt increases, as the Federal Reserve's balance sheet increases, isn't that going to cause inflation? Well, let's take a step back for a moment because this requires just a tad bit of nuance. I mentioned before that the only source of real income that the government has is uh, taxes, and then anything beyond that they have to borrow. Now, by itself, neither of those things are inherently inflationary in the long term. And here's what I mean by that. When the government taxes in order to get its income, it's taking money from one place and it's gonna spend that, so it's just putting that money back into another place of the economy. So the government imposes a burden on wages, on uh, salaries, a burden on uh, in enjoying uh, vices like uh, tobacco and alcohol and importing things through tariffs. And so the government imposes an economic burden by saying, hey, these things are gonna be more expensive. We're gonna take more money out of these areas. And then that money that we take out of these areas, we're gonna redeploy that into other areas. And that's largely going to be just paychecks of government employees. Some of it's going to be uh, to other private companies, uh, especially like military contractors, things like that. And so the total amount of money in the system doesn't change. And so you might have in, you know, some uh, rise in prices from the additional money chasing the same goods and services over here, like healthcare, education, housing, military, et cetera. And then you might have a decrease in prices over here. Uh, but regardless of the impact on prices across the system, the total amount of money doesn't, doesn't change from taxes. The total amount of money in the pool is the exact same, whether it goes into people's pockets, corporate bank accounts, whatever, the total amount of money in the system is the same. So it's not inflationary, not deflationary. You still have a steady supply of dollars. Now, earlier I mentioned, I said that debt by itself is not inherently uh, inflationary uh, when the government borrows money to spend. And here's what I mean by that. When you look at the long term by itself in its purest form, government borrowing doesn't have to be inflationary because while the money supply increases from that temporary spending, as soon as they have to pay that bet that debt down and pay that off, the money supply will recontract again. So the money supply expands 
as the federal debt grows, as the national debt grows, and then if it's ever paid back down again, that's when the money supply contracts because that's now money taken out of circulation instead of new money being put into circulation. Now, how does that debt get paid off? Well, it's theoretically someday has to be paid off by taxes, right? And so that is, again, why it would lead to a recontracting of the money supply. However, we're at a point now where pretty much everybody realizes that debt will never get paid off. It will never even reverse course, most likely. It will probably continue to just accelerate, just grow at an exponential pace. And almost everybody agrees with this, and a lot of people actually think that's great as well. Now, that's a video for another time, but the, the problem with this is that it means that debt is no longer uh, a neutral thing over time because if you're constantly just increasing the amount of money that's being injected into a system and never retaking that money out and contracting the money supply again, that doesn't, that's not debt anymore. It's not repaid. Debt implies that, that that's gonna be paid off at some point. If you continually just roll over your debt, ultimately it's not really debt anymore. And so now we get into kind of the third way, which is really, it's still borrowing, but the third way that the government funds its expenses is not from borrowing out of the economy. Because back in uh, 2018, the federal government had tapped out uh, the uh, the private the private sector had tapped out the economy couldn't tax anymore couldn't borrow anymore out of the economy and there was nobody nobody left to to loan to the government it had reached its capacity on how much money it could loan to the government and so bonds started to sell off rates started to skyrocket and the federal reserve had to step in and increase it, its bond buying purchases now if you could print money if you could go to your computer hit print print out dollar bills, and then you could take that, you could loan that fresh money to the government, and the government could pay you an interest rate, you wouldn't really care how low that interest rate is because you could just print more money in order to loan that to the government to make up the difference. If you wanted to make a couple hundred grand in a year, you just print out you know, a couple hundred million dollars in paper, hand that to the government, and then they'd pay you the interest. This is what the Federal Reserve does. They create money, they're the ones that create the money out of thin air, so they lend money to the government when the government can't borrow from any anybody else. And so they're the reason, they are what enables the national debt to not really be debt anymore. It's never going to be repaid. Ultimately, what will probably happen is the Federal Reserve just ultimately takes over and owns all of the debt by the United States government because more and more people who have loaned money to the government will not want the low interest rate that the government is taking anymore. So they're not going to uh, you know, re-up their loan basically and continue to accept that interest. They're either gonna take the cash when that loan matures, or they're going to sell that loan onto the open market and get the cash prior to the maturity date. And if there's not enough buyers of government treasuries, of government bonds on the market, that's where the Federal Reserve comes in and they just print more money to buy up whatever loans nobody else wants to uh, own anymore. It's not just individuals and institutions, it's central banks all around the world as well that are slowly getting rid of their uh, of their exposure and their holdings of United States treasuries. And just in case you haven't jumped already to the conclusion of this to figure out what the, you know, the consequences of this are, Basically, if a treasury is just a, a government bond is really just a dollar that pays you interest. It's a small amount of interest, but it's still there. And if people and institutions and governments all around the world don't want dollars that pay them interest anymore, you're probably not going to want dollars that don't pay you interest. And so when you get dollars in exchange for treasuries, what are you gonna do with them? You're gonna get rid of them for a different currency or for, uh, or for assets or for goods uh, and or services. Now, the reason why people think this is not a problem, that America's national debt is skyrocketing, it's being financed by the creation of new money by the Federal Reserve, and they say that deficits are a good thing, is really just because of the advantage that the United States holds over the rest of the world in, in, in that uh, the, the dollar is the global reserve currency, and everybody in the world uses the dollar for trade. But the more and more people get rid of treasuries, the faster and faster faster people will get rid of dollars. And the faster people and institutions and governments get rid of dollars, the less people will want to actually hold on to and use dollars. Now, this isn't something that's going to happen overnight. This isn't something that's probably going to happen within the next couple of weeks, couple of months. But eventually, the abuse 
of overprinting dollars, not caring about the deficits, increasing the debt, exploding the total pool of uh, dollars in circulation, and using that to buy actual stuff, you're just giving somebody else paper, getting real stuff in return, eventually that reverses itself. The more you abuse that privilege, the less and less the world is going to be okay with it and we'll put the brakes on, we'll stop it and we'll eventually reverse it. And then all those dollars that have been sent out around the world so that we can get our stuff, eventually the United States will be the only ones still legally bound to accept dollars as payment for stuff and all, those, all that paper will come back and then all the stuff that we have here will go to ownership of foreign investors for foreign central banks and governments and uh, people who have moved their money out of dollars and into things like real assets. So that's the story. We're continually setting records, the bad kind, where we're exploding the, the, the deficits. We spent $1.7 trillion over the amount of uh, income received from taxes. And although that's not all adding up to uh, borrowing, there's only a certain amount that's in savings in that treasury general account. And they're not really gonna go below that four or $500 billion mark. Even if they took it down to zero, there's still a limit. It could go down to zero, right? And that means that eventually any extra spending does add to the uh, national debt. And even so, that's all new money pouring into the system, which dilutes the purchasing power of all the existing dollars. And it makes it more and more painful to hold on to treasuries and more more people, institutions, and governments around the world start to shed their treasuries, will then start to shed their dollars. And the very thing that allows the United States government to abuse its power by printing, overprinting, and exporting those dollars, having twin deficits, the trade deficit and the budget deficit, is going to cause everybody around the world to not use dollars anymore. And that's when you have a currency crisis. If you're interested in moving some of your dollars into gold or silver or Bitcoin or investing them in real estate, things like that, in order to reduce your exposure to dollars and get your wealth into real assets, I've got all of my recommended resources linked in the description below. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good day.